honors but one example of why literacy is so critical in our nation, why it, and why it's an important destination in my journey this year. And our journey has just begun. As part of our working group, and in the spirit of El Día de los Niños, El Día de los Libros, <laughs> we are encouraging and providing some resources to the five ethnic affiliates to, to develop family literacy projects, programs, and resources that are available to all users in the community and that can be replicated in all communities throughout this country. This is a perfect example of success. And when you think of those, the data that I shared with you, this is why it's critical. ALA staff, Dale Lipschultz, and again our two co-chairs are working with the working group in this effort. We need your support on this journey, not only this year, but in the following years. And let's take this symbolic journey together on Route 66 from Chicago to LA Library Advocacy and LA Literacy Advocacy. Also as ALA President, I want to re-announce another initiative for this year. Jim shared this announcement with those of you who were at the opening general session on, sun, on Saturday. And this initiative is the Spectrum Presidential Initiative. It's a... This is a year-long initiative to raise a million dollars for the Spectrum Scholarship Program. Betty Turok, who was going to be here tonight but uh, fell ill and went home, is the past president of ALA and has agreed to serve as the chair of this initiative. And this is the most appropriate thing as the, it was Betty who, who's, who really started the first Spectrum Initiative during her presidential term. Roberta Stevens, president-elect, and Jim Reddick, our past president, have pledged their time and their commitment to this initiative also, and for that we really appreciate it. <laughs> to date we have Harvard Law Professor Charles Ogletree, and author Rodolfo Anaya serving as honorary co-chairs. We all know that our nation's demographics are dramatically changing, and we have made great strides with our Spectrum Initiative over the years. But we still have a long way to go in making our profession more racially and ethnically diverse giving thanks and by counting my blessings. First I want to thank my father Joe who's with us tonight in spirit and my mother Mary who is with us here in person. And if it wasn't for them in a very cold San Luis Valley night, I wouldn't be here today. <laughs> now, Mom just celebrated her 86th birthday. She's so cute. That's what I'm going to look like. Take a look at her now. I'm going to be the spirit image of that when I'm 86. And thanks to my sister Normandy, also known as Pinky, and my niece Loy Lynn for sharing this wonderful occasion with me. <laughs> thanks to Alan Radcliffe, the love of my life, who has offered nothing but un he just thought I was gonna say nothing, <laughs> nothing but unwavering support and encouragement throughout my educational and professional careers. And for that support, and for that support, 
and love I'm eternally grateful to you. Thanks to my former brothers and sisters. also been very instrumental in my leadership development. Okay, so not, so as not to, to disappoint my Reforma family, I'm concluding with my top eight blessings for the evening. <laughs> oh, but these are serious. These are serious. Okay, okay I know. Blessing number eight is to have good friends since junior high, all there, right now they're all in the doghouse, <laughs> Connie and Laura, and other good friends, Jackie, Pam, and Linda, for joining me tonight, and who have all been so encouraging and so supportive and proud of me. Blessing <laughs> number seven is to have such a supportive network of ALA friends and mentors throughout this country who encouraged me and gently pushed me to this stage. <laughs> Especially the other two musketeers, Jean and Fred. Yeah. Because if it wasn't for them helping me to carry the South in the executive board election in the late 90s, I probably wouldn't be here either. <laughs> and although it's successfully retired, Jim or Jean came to Chicago just to attend my inauguration and thank you, Jean. Wow. Lesson number six is to be working with the governing council that has ALA's best interests in mind. Lesson <coughs> number five is to have an executive board that is extremely collegial and dedicated to leading ALA. <coughs> Blessing number four is to have an excellent executive director, Keith Michael Fields. <laughs> and an excellent, excellent, and Jim couldn't have said it better, an excellent ALA staff with whom to work. <laughs> Blessing number three is to have a dedicated working group and co-chairs who are all instrumental in making my initiative become a reality. Lesson number two is to be leading one of the best and most committed professional associations in this country. And Hector, I forgot the drum roll. I forgot to ask for a drum roll. But before I go on to blessing number two, number one, I have to remind you that we have a professional photographer out in, in the lobby and please, Go out there and get your picture taken. We all look so beautiful tonight. <laughs> and then, <laughs> thank you. And then also James, who was the other one? Oh, yes. Whose ever birthday is the closest to today, which is July 14th, you get to take the centerpiece home. Or to your room. Either. Okay. And now, lesson number one.